when economists talk about the individual or, or in particular the uh, consumer maximizing, we generally uh, think about them having something called a utility function. And um, is that justifiable? Is it justifiable to think that we can reduce all of the things that they might choose, the value they get from all the things they might choose into a single number which can be mapped as a function of any combination of things that they might choose. Well, um, let's see how we could justify this based on our so-called axioms over preferences. Uh, so here's the definition of the utility function from Osborne and Rubinstein. Okay, so they say for any set X, And any, this is a set of elements, perhaps all the possible elements they can choose from. For any set, for all sets, for any set, for all set X, and preference relationship, we've talked about that quite a lot, the preference relationship, on X. So this is, this is something that tells us what the, ordering is of the partial ordering of X what's preferred to what what's indifferent to what um, and yeah, what, those two things um, the function ma mapping from X to the set of all real numbers we use this capital R with a special Font to denote the set of all real numbers. So this function, mapping from all of the elements, any element within the set, to a real number, we say uh, it. So this function u, we'll say u. Sometimes you see people say written as u with an argument, but we're just u with a parentheses and a dot. But we're just going to call the functions at least following Osborne and Rubinstein with, by just giving it a, a letter U, maps from X to R, we say it represents represent it represents the preference ordering the preference, yeah, the preference ordering, these preferences if this is pretty straightforward X is at least as good or at least yeah, weakly preferred to, or at least as good as Y, if and only if, IFF, if and only if, the utility of element X is greater than or equal to the utility of element Y. And here, X and Y are elements of larger set X. Okay? So, yeah, this function represents preferences. If represents preferences, we say it's a U is a utility utility function function for these preferences. Okay, so in other words, we can if we can if we can come up with a function that's a function of every element in this set, such that whenever one element is at least as good as another set then that element, the function of that element is given at least as high a number. So if I like frosted flakes at least as much as corn flakes, the function must assign frosted flakes at least as high a number as corn flakes. Otherwise, we can't say that in order to represent my preferences. Okay, pretty straightforward. Uh, can you construct, now let's, let's think of an example of this, okay? Uh, and remember, these elements could be combinations of goods. Right? This this element of the set could be could be all the combinations of food and beverages you drink in the relevant period, or it could be food, beverages, drink, leisure. It could be we could we could specify it and think of it in different ways. Okay. So imagine the preferences over certain elements such that A is strictly preferred to B, which is indifferent to C, which is strictly preferred to D, 
on the set. You can choose between A, B, C, and D. So I'll distribute that. I'll draw some lines. So can you construct a utility function that represents these preferences? That's a folded in exercise in the fold. So all I have to do is assign a number to each of these things such that, uh, well, A is weakly preferred to B and B is not weakly preferred to A. Remember, that's what this means. That's the technical definition of it. B is weakly preferred to C and C is weakly preferred to B, so they're indifferent. C is weakly preferred to D and D is not weakly preferred to C. Now, I came up with one example. Okay, so let's say u of a is equal to 5, u of b is equal to negative uh, 1, which is also equal to the utility of c, and utility of d is equal to negative, it doesn't matter, 17. All right, these things can go negative, that, that, that doesn't matter. All that matters is the relative relationships, which is larger. Okay, does this utility function um, does this utility function represent these preferences over this set? By the way, I know the relationship, the preference relationship between any two elements of these set of this set, if I assume transitivity. All right, so I know A is strictly preferred to B and B is indifferent to C. We can derive from that that A is strictly preferred to C. You could do it in a fancy way using the weakly preferred operator, or let's not do it because it's not that interesting or surprising. Okay, does this represent the preferences? Well, uh, A is preferred, strictly preferred to B. Uh, uh, so is the utility of A a larger number than the utility of B? Yes, it is. Five is larger than negative one. So going back to the weak preference, A is weakly preferred to B. Is the utility of A at least as high as the utility of B? Yes, it is. But remember, we want it to be if and only if. We want it to be that it's never the case that the utility number is at least as good as the util is at least as high as the utility number of the other option when something is not weakly preferred to something else. So A strictly preferred to B means that not B weakly preferred to A, right? So it means A is weakly preferred to B, but not B weakly preferred to A. That's what this means. So if the utility of B was at least as high as the utility of A, this preference would not be represented. I'm saying rather obvious things, but making it excessively formal. So don't worry if you're feeling a little bit, why is he saying all this stuff? Well, is the utility of B at least as large as the utility of A? No, it isn't. It is strictly smaller. I think you get the idea. The point you should take from this, one point you take from this, is this could be any number as long as it's less than negative 1, as long as this utility of D is less than the utility of these guys. So this could be negative 17 million. I still wouldn't really be able to tell the difference between this utility function and the one that I just had up on the board. If I looked at choices, people would always choose if they had C and D in a choice set, they would always choose C over D, whether D gives negative 17 or negative 17 million.